Hello, <laughs> hello you, welcome or welcome back. Today we will be going to work on cross-legged sitting. So please come to sit first on the floor and have your legs spread out long. So we will prepare our starting position. A casual, relaxed lesson with big goals, big, big expectations. To start with, please bend your right knee and put your right foot on your left thigh. So that would be the first question. How, how can we bring the right foot on the left thigh? So maybe help with your left hand. And don't worry. Don't worry about how far your knee is pointing upwards or downwards and uh, you can lean on your right hand and the first movement would be to lift and lower the right knee lift and lower the right knee so very casual lesson we want to take the stress out of this movement and continue with this exploration of lifting and lowering the right knee while i will say a couple of things maybe we have three movements in this first movement. A movement that consists of three movements. The right knee up and down, the right knee towards the floor and you will feel the limitations. And the right foot on the left thigh. So with your left hand you can reposition your right foot at any time. See how far up you can bring your right foot towards your left groin. The junction in between your left leg and your torso. And there's the third important movement. Maybe this is the main movement of this lesson. The pelvic tilt to roll your pelvis forwards and backwards. Or to roll your pelvis a little bit more towards your left foot and backwards away from your left foot. Or you might want to roll your pelvis towards your right knee. And when you do this you will notice it will become easier to bring your right knee to the floor. So. It starts to look a bit more like cross-legged sitting. So three movements to lift and lower the right knee, to adjust your right foot towards your left junction of your left leg and your pelvis and to roll your pelvis forwards and backwards. Maybe you have done the pelvic clock lesson together with me or somewhere and you can explore this direction of tilting your pelvis forwards and backwards and of course that's also a movement in your lower back so when you roll your pelvis forwards arch your lower back it's a contraction of muscles in your lower back but maybe a little bit of side bending isn't there and when you roll the pelvis backwards contract also your abs <clears throat> your strong and beautiful abdominal muscles your six packs that are inside of every one of us to roll the pelvis backwards and forwards and see if that has any, any influence on how far the right knee is close or away from the floor. And then we can do the same thing on the other side if you will change over your legs and the, the same thing to position your left foot on your right thigh without worrying how much <laughs> your left knee points upwards or downwards and with your right hand hold your left foot at times so or you could lean against both hands behind you. But so the adjustment of the right foot, adjustment to find a better position for your right foot during the tilt of the pelvis, the pelvis rolling forwards and backwards. Does it roll at all? So that's, that's a question. Does your pelvis in this position roll at all? Can you find this movement, this gentle movement of your pelvis, maybe a little pelvic circle and your head can participate in this pelvic circle. You can change over your legs a couple of times just to ease ease into this position and you can also imagine this position in sitting when you are sitting on a chair to cross over your leg and, and get a 
start to get a feeling for this, a feeling, an image, an internal image for this, for this position and its requirements. So it's not just about your knee and it's not just about your hip joint, but it's also about your pelvis, your pelvic movements, about your entire spine, about how you hold your head, of course, how much tension you have in your eyes, how much tension you have in your hands, everything, how much tension you have in your feet, everything influences, contributes or obstruct this first movement, exploration, easing into this lesson. And then time for a first break. So please come to, please come to lie onto your back. Let's take a rest on the back with the legs spread out long. And then when you're on the back, so nicely, nicely resting on your back, you can feel how you rest on your back, how that, feel, how your contact with the floor is today, and then bring your right foot again onto your left thigh. So bend your right knee to bring your right, to put your right foot on your left thigh and catch your right foot with your left hand and see if you can pull, or how far. So that's the question, how far can you pull your right foot towards your left groin? And how far can your, how close can your right knee go down to the floor? And still, the pelvic tilt. So don't lift your head, but if at all, arch your back. So you can arch your back to help your pelvis roll and to help your right knee lower towards the floor. And you can readjust your right foot with your left hand to find better positions. Uh, not so much an adjustment or a corrective movement, but maybe there's a better place, a better angle for your right foot on your left thigh, which helps your right knee to come closer to the floor. And maybe you have uh, this cupboard when you roll to the right, you can touch your right knee to the floor. But this doesn't help the pelvic tilt, so don't roll too much to the right, but think of like rolling your, it's an anterior pelvic tilt, to arch your back to help your right knee to come closer to the floor. And maybe when you arch a lot, it's easy, but maybe you can also just arch a little bit and, and find how the pelvic movement and the spinal movement and your head movement relates to your leg movement. And then uh, let go of that and change over your legs. We don't want to put pressure on the knees, so be careful. Don't make this a lesson about coercing your knee to, into this position, but make this a lesson about where can you put your left foot on your right thigh? How can you hold your <laughs> left foot with your right hand? How does the arching of your back, how does the rolling of your pelvis affect this movement of finding a way to let go of these hip, hip muscles, the, the muscles deep inside and around the hip joint. There's a whole lot of tendons and muscles and uh, some people say there's a lot of emotions stored inside or not. <laughs> Who knows how all this works, but so here we take the time to explore and to, to, to find find out things about ourselves we might normally don't have a chance to discover. So that's for this position on the back and then take a rest on the back again and see, wow, if, if, if this exploration, the second exploration changed how you lie on your back. And it's entirely up to you if you work on one side for a long time or if you switch often from the right side to the left side. But please be, be nice and careful and, and loving to yourself in an explorative mindset. Uh, just see, see how you can move instead of forcing uh, any, anything special. And then please come up again to sit we continue swiftly and this time bend your right knee again and put your right foot against your left thigh. 
So right knee bent and let's see how much you have to twist your ankle to twist but in a good way how you can position your right foot against like as if your left thigh would be a wall and you can put your right foot against your left thigh so don't let your right foot slip underneath but make a wall you can put your sole of your right foot against and then um, again the, the pelvic the pelvic tilt so that's that's the question how do you have to roll your pelvis forwards or more to the left or straight where's the center center in between left and right or roll the pelvis towards your right knee forwards and backwards and yes our strong and beautiful abs inside <laughs> our internal six pack <laughs> contract or release and then put your right hand on your right knee and push your right knee down to the floor and also here maybe there's a, a twist a little tornado movement a little spiraling movement instead of pushing the knee straight down maybe there's a preferred direction maybe the knee if you feel for it if you Take the time to relax into this position and, and see in which direction would the knee, would your knee like to go down? How, how does this connect to the hip joint? And lean on your left hand. So push the floor with your left hand and push your right knee with the right hand. It's like give it a good spread. And, and see how you have to move, how you can support with your whole self this right knee coming closer or being pushed against the floor so that's that or maybe the right thigh can turn a little bit or maybe you have to reposition your right foot but we don't want to overdo it especially if you haven't done this for a long time so please extend your right leg again stop before it hurts or maybe it <laughs> already hurts so uh, we should have stopped earlier so that's up to you to know know yourself when to stop even if you don't feel pain yet but maybe everything is all right i hope everything is all right then bend your of course bend your left knee and put your left foot against your right thigh lean against the right hand on the floor and then the same thing with your left hand find find a way to help your left knee come closer to the floor and maybe again there's a spiraling movement uh, a direction you want to find and to follow and uh, we have the pelvic tilt so you can tilt the pelvis forwards or more to the left towards your left knee or more to the right towards your right foot and press down with the right hand on the floor and with the left hand on your left knee <clears throat> until you have a good idea about this exploration the situation we have brought ourselves into and that's something you can uh, learn by heart remember and do in between without formaling in a formal way following a sequence or a choreography okay and then extend both legs again <laughs> spread out your legs long give them a good spread so see see how easy it is for you to spread your legs or not and then for the next movement please bend your right knee again put your right foot against your left thigh just like we did again and then place your bend your left knee and place your left foot in the crease of your right knee so where, where can you where can you put your left foot so lean against your left hand and with your right hand you can help your position your left foot and see how far the 
left knee is away from the floor or how close it is to the floor and ease into this position so it's a movement of the hip joint less a coercion of the knee to go down but a movement in the hip joint and maybe there's something you can let go of or release and lean against both hands behind you so lean on the right hand and the left hand and then again roll your pelvis but in a way where you arch your back and maybe maybe you can lift off your pelvis from the floor so we don't have to glue the pelvis to the floor we don't have to stick it to the floor but you can lift off your pelvis and roll your pelvis extend your back in order to bring your knees closer to the floor or press to the floor or roll over your knees on the floor so again we have the pelvic clock we have the movements of the spine you have the movement of the head you have your eyes and your jaw the tension in your jaw which might affect your neck which might affect your lower back <clears throat> see how everything fits together how you can ease into this rolling of the pelvis to roll more onto your knees and to little by little maybe your knees come closer to the floor without overworking the knees so it's a whole body pattern we are learning we are learning a movement here and uh, not we're not going into a stretch okay then again extend your legs have a short rest with your legs long see where you are at if your legs if your knees uh, still in one piece I hope so <laughs> and then let's do the other side if you're ready so bend your left knee and put your left foot against your right thigh and then bend your right knee and put your right foot in the crease of your left knee and see how far your right knee is off the floor don't worry about that worry more about leaning against your hands to find a good position where you can lean against worry about your <laughs> pelvic tilt so see if you can roll the pelvis if you can move the pelvis if you can lift the pelvis and maybe there was some some tension which is easy to let go and and suddenly you can bring both knees to, to the floor and you can lift your pelvis again you can move your behind move your behind to to lift your behind, to arch your back, to bring both knees closer to the floor and see if you want to reposition your feet, if you want to reposition your right foot you can use your hand to reposition your foot or you can see if you can move your pelvis to reposition your legs so you roll forwards and backwards <laughs> then we can go into serious meditation already is it time no we it is time for a break so please extend both legs let's take a short rest on the back shall we a uh, well-deserved rest on the back ah and just feel how you're lying on the back how is your contact how is your how did your back change how do you perceive the floor? How do you perceive your resting position? So we, let's take like half a minute. Just to take a short rest. Okay, and then let's continue with this sequence, this little choreography. Please come up to sit with your legs spread long and bend your right knee. Put your right foot against your left thigh and then bend. Yes, see where, how, how do you have to position your right foot? So maybe you have a, a way of putting your right foot 
against the left, but they, maybe there's a better way. Maybe you can turn it. Maybe there's a, a way that's just nicer. And then also bend your left knee and put your right, put your left foot in the crease of your right knee. And lean against your left hand behind you and put your right hand in front of you. So the left hand is behind you and the right hand is in front of you. And this time push with your left hand and slide with your right hand forwards. <laughs> so you're twisted a little bit. The upper body is twisted. The left hand is behind you and the right hand is in front of you. And see if you can lower your head to the floor in front of you. If you can bow down, contract the abs a little bit, don't just fall forward, but maybe you can bring your head closer to the floor in front of you. So slide the hand, where does the hand, the right hand has it, does the right hand slide to the right or forward or to the left and, and move the, the pelvis, should be able to move and I have seen students touch the floor just fine with their nose, so I'm not one of them. <laughs> Far from it. Let's change over the hands. So bring your right hand behind you and the left hand forwards and see if you are a person who can easily touch your chin to the floor or if you are more like an upright person like me who <clears throat> the, floor <laughs> when the floor is a little bit far away. But it's, there's no, there will be no gold medal for anyone to touch the floor and there will be no monetary reward. It's just a little exploration. So also have both hands behind you. So that's a variation to have both hands behind you. So we had already this, this roll of the pelvis or have both hands in front of you and slide both hands forwards. So, so maybe you can stretch out nicely on the floor in front. So, I mean, that's, that's nice. Something to look forward to or something to enjoy if, if you're able to do that. And if not, if you're far from it, like me, then it's better to take a break to untwist the legs to extend the knees, to give the knees a break. There's a lot of pressure on the knees if the hip joints are tight. And there's a million tricks, of course, to release the hip joints. Um, like, for example, a side lifting of the leg to, to lift the legs out to the side. And there's many things we can do, but I, I want to follow a certain sequence where we connect the pelvic movements with the, with the cross-legged sitting, with the movements of the knee. Um, let's do the other side. So which side is it? Put your, bend your left knee and put your left foot against your right upper leg. And then bend your right knee and put your right foot in the crease of your left knee and have your left hand behind you, lean against the left hand and the right hand on the floor in front of you and push with your left hand and slide with your right hand or change over hands, so the switch over your hands, so your right hand is in the back and the left hand is in the front and one side is easier than the other, isn't it? So we, we keep this playfully. We, we try, ah, oh, okay, it's like this and it's like that and I can feel this and I can discover that and ah, I noticed something about this and ah, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> so we learn something about the position, about our possibilities. We, we learn, we step into the unknown, we do something unknown and we observe how we respond in situations uh, when we come into situations that are unfamiliar with there's a, like, a little bit of psychological component to it as well. How do we 
oppose? How do we respond to the unfamiliar, to the unknown? Do we stress out? Do we tense up? Or can we take ourselves a little bit back and have this a more like a superior, sovereign state of mind where we observe and mm, we act responsible or sensible to a new situation? And of course, if you haven't done yet, you can have both hands in the back and roll your pelvis or have both hands in front of you and slide both hands and relax to the floor in front of you if you can or, or just enjoy <laughs> enjoy what is possible to, to you, enjoy the movement of your pelvis, enjoy how you can extend out your knees to the side, see how far you can bring your knees already, how far they drop by themselves to the floor. If we make this a movement of the whole body instead, a problem of the knees. So, what's left to do? One last rest on the back. Please take a rest on the back. Ah. <laughs> Quick to have little breaks on the back. See how, how this position has changed for you, how you lie on the back now how you perceive your legs on the floor, how they feel on the floor, how you feel your right side, your left side, how your shoulders are maybe, even your shoulders you have maybe relaxed and maybe your breathing has changed. So just observe what this cross-legged sitting exploration into cross-legged sitting uh, has done for you, the, the benefits you can get from this or the experience you can get from this. And let's uh, try the first, the second movement we did in this lesson. Please bend your right knee and put your right foot on your left thigh and with your left hand catch your right foot and just see how close can you bring your right foot to your left groin now. Now maybe, maybe that's, that has uh, changed and how far can you bring down. So maybe that, that's an improvement, isn't it? And of course also on the other side if you bend your left knee and put your left foot on your right thigh and see how far can you bring your left foot now to your right groin how much can you how did the arching of your back the tilt of your pelvis develop so that that might be a lot better now So, and then there's one last thing to do, as always, we need to come back to this world, to face this world in upright standing. So, please roll over aside and come up to stand slowly, slowly, because we maybe we have changed a lot in the hip joint, maybe a big reorganization in the hip joints and in the knee. So, please come up slowly and test your standing, test your legs, see if your legs, how, how your legs are carrying you now. Wow. So there might be a lot more freedom suddenly in your hip joints. Don't be surprised by that, but make use of the new possibilities. See how you can integrate them in your daily movement patterns and, and, and how you use your environment with yourself every day. So let's see in standing. Yeah, and just take, take a moment to explore that, how you walk, <laughs> how, how easy it is to stand upright and to face the world, how easy it is to take a step, to use your legs, to push the floor, to catch yourself with your legs, to enjoy what you have got. So, So it was my pleasure to have you here today with me to lead you through this movement sequence. I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I enjoyed teaching. And thank you for watching and see you in the next video.